Okay, so I'm just doing the glazing now on the underpainting of this um, copy of Rubens' portrait of a young girl. And a little uh, sneak insight to the process. Uh, I did oil out, but it wasn't enough. It just didn't feel like it was um, slick enough on the surface. So I've actually, I've been, I was working on the cheek a little bit and I've rubbed it all off and uh, so oiled out again. So it's never too late and it's just something, you know, if it doesn't feel right, much better just stop. Uh, just reassess, have another go at it, and then um, and start again. And hopefully this this will be a bit better. But I was just going through some of these areas, uh, just mentioning that I'm I'm trying to as much as possible to sort of hold on to the underpainting that's already there. And I'm just going over with very light scumbles, and it's going to look messy for a while. While I just sort of feel my way around, I can definitely see you know how he's done it. Uh, because you know certainly the, you know there's great clues around here where you can see the underpainting is showing through very much um, and a very limited palette of vermilion uh, white titanium white vermilion yellow ochre and I've put some alizarin crimson ultramarine blue and ivory black on the palette but hopefully I don't I don't want to use any of them we'll just see there's burnt umber there actually as well We'll just see how that goes. It's going to be darker. So I put my palette up here so you can just see me mixing some of the colour tones. So I just shouldn't worry too much. I'm just going to plow straight in. For example, this is a lot of vermilion here. This is the kind of tone that he's used on these cheeks. I'm just going to, sorry, this is wobbling. Best of all, it's going to be a sable brush in a while. So the pinks are just going to be more vermilion and white, and uh, these areas um, around her cheeks, you know, there's a lot more ochre in there. So we're just playing around, just seeing what it feels like. That's probably quite a good one for the sort of shadowy bits. Shadows are actually quite warm in places. Sort of a dab of pure vermilion in there. Just as I feel my way, I'm just going to see how this works. Just seeing what it looks like. I mean, that's the mix, isn't it? You can just see that that's quite close to the actual colours that he mixed up.
So yeah, this is going to be quite pinky. And this I'm sure is the area around her brow. And I'll be able to add further highlights into this as I go anyway. Much more. So it's just three colours still. This is just ochre and white. I'm going to keep a bit, I'm just putting a microscopic amount of medium in just to help it dry, really. trying to get to grips with his process because it's, I'm sure it's nothing more than this but it's just being able to sort of come close to the, you know it's effortless the way he put it onto the canvas and probably you know you can never really do that but I'm just trying to get a feel for it And I'm going to do some portraits um, of some of my own portraits that are using these methods as well so then I can really sort of put it into practice. After all these people had you know, vast studios um, with uh, many assistants and sort of and so much work going on, so many commissions pending that this is why they chose these very efficient ways of working. It's already just immediately starting to look better. Okay, so, so I've got two brushes, one with one for the lights, one for the darks. Too dark. Very lots of colour there, lots of colour. Bearing in mind, I'll, I'll blend all of these in in a bit. It's just trying to feel our way through. You can see loads, loads of vermilion in this shadow in here. Oh, that's just too light. Um, So I'm using the other brush but just making it slightly darker. Pure vermilion. Probably you know a lot of those so the depth of that would might have been achieved in a second glaze. See what it looks like. What we have to do is just sort of allow a few hours at this stage to really spend a long time blending all of these areas and just working into it. It always looks really strange initially as we just slap a bit of paint on and then everything starts to sort of come into focus a bit more.
Okay, I'm going to get another brush now with even more, just white really. We'll try and get some of the very light highlights. We do need some colour. too warm. A bit too pink. So that's sort of right. This brush is really fraying. Mm, so just in here, yeah, it's not quite as light as that. So you can just pick up a bit of paint from the palette and just start to, you know, we're mixing it on the surface of the painting. And then I've just gone over that, that's a classic scumble. So the shadow from underneath is still showing through. I mean, having done this in a raw umber underpainting, I did think afterwards that possibly you can see around the shadows um, just here. Uh, possibly, you know, he's used just a straightforward grisaille because it's, um, it's quite a sort of greeny shadow and that's just the paint showing through. I mean, it has it when you see it and then suddenly there's some colours added onto the underpainting. It, it looks quite blue or green, so, you know, maybe it's, it's close. But possibly I can try another, um, well, another Rubens copy or another sort of painting, you know, with the grisaille underpainting and just these colours on top and just see how that looks as well later on. red around here. Very, very red. So just pure vermilion. Same here. So if I mix up these, just the two of them together, I think that's going to be a way just scumble this. So just creating a bit of warmth in these shadows.
just another bit that it's, it's got that same mix. So under her chin there's a sort of just differentiation in the shadows. It's quite it's crude but it's um I'm sure it's the way he would have approached it. The way, not as good as or anything like that, but something similar. in this shadow. Yeah, just noticed. So very, very pure vermilion in this shadow here of her nose. Doesn't do it justice at all there, but I'm a bit scared of it. And I think if I wanted to rework into these um, into the shadows, I can use some burnt umber. But ideally, what I'm just trying to um, get close to is just the the purity of the process. So you've done the underpainting, and then it's I can't believe I'm just using three colours, and um, I reckon you can finish it just just with that. You should be able to, and then you've you've. You definitely got close to to just that the, the beautiful simplicity of the process, the sort of effortless nature of it. It's not effortless, but um, just so beautifully efficient. Not sure what I'm not sure what's going on there really. It's got 
got a sable brush now, just going to mix in a bit, just blend it. Careful with that shadow. It's so always the, the day I choose to paint is the day someone decides to chop a tree down. Just going to carry on regardless, carry on painting. Very light, that's not light enough. I'm just going to get something on here. Yeah, actually this shadow from my underpainting is not quite dark enough I don't think around here so therefore it's not as, as much of a sense of her smile you know and her cheeks and dimples there that's not mm. yeah, it needs something more around here so I might have to work into that with a bit of burnt umber Too much. Just 
lighter version. Pure whites, this highlight on the forehead. Well, I haven't, yeah, pretty close. I'll build up to that. That's another area where you can see it sort of quite clearly. He's just very loosely brushed over it. Probably actually, yeah, to be fair, with a larger brush, it's true. Um, I'm going to invest in some larger brushes. But I do quite like working with my size twos. Sure what's lacking I don't know it might be sort of um, calcite or something like that something with some translucency in the paint but I'm sure not I'm sure it's just you know bog standard oils and uh, just this um, beautifully efficient process oh when I rolled out I did leave a little bit more oil on than usual but that's it's quite helpful actually, it's quite easy to pick things off. So I've got this a lot of white on my brush. Um, but that works quite well. Just when I mi I can just mix it into what's ever already there, whatever's already there.
So be careful with the hogs here because it will just take the paint off. So that's um, that's quite good actually. Wall ochre. Just have to put some more on here and there. Pure ochre with a save ore. I mean, it's impossible to get it exactly right in a way you know it's not the point we are sort of copying but it's it's just getting a feel for the process you know you never copy it unless you got every little stroke of every hair of the brush has to be just right and the speed of the application has to be just right Not so good. Okay, that's one of the things that is stopping it looking like it's working is the mouth. So I'm just pure vermilion again. Possibly there is a lizard and crimson in there as well. being a bit stubborn about what paint I use I just don't yet want to use anything other than these three colours
there are lots, a lot of ochre, loads of ochre around all over the place. That's really the key to it. for another sable brush. So my dilemma really in doing these videos is uh, just to try and uh, get the right balance between making something that's watchable and showing the process and also you know getting it to finish to a degree where it does actually prove my point and I can't you know I, I am actually able to to show that you know this using this kind of process he's able to sort of get this sort of high degree of finish but that yet yeah, I'm I'm unable necessary to do that. Um, you know when I'm working when I'm being filmed. So it's yeah what I might do is you know I just carry on working um, off camera. It depends what people want really. Uh, I've just noticed with you know some of the videos that I put out there, um, people are just generally interested in the first glaze anyway. You know, and that's fine, and that's all this would be. It just it shows that if you it's all about process, and if you continue using you know following the same process, then you are you will be able to sort of arrive at something. Um, that you know looks like the original, and also um, you know use it in your own paintings, and you know shows proves the point of the process. I just don't want, I don't want it to be too crude. It just that doesn't help the cause, I don't feel. Actually, I know that, that um, the line of this cheekbone is wrong. That's going to be pure white. That's something I meant to do, so.
I'm just looking at the way he's done the highlights on the forehead up here in this area. I just I'm sure that he's done you know a few glazes. You know, two, I don't know, it's difficult, there's just a lot of paint there. I don't know what the quality is that I don't like about my version at the moment. It's just... It doesn't have the sense of translucence that Ruben's paint has. And I don't know why. And that really, I mean, that would be because it's had a few glazes. It's just when you see these areas um, in the shadow of the nose here, it's just it. What well, strikes me as being pretty clear that it's just literally a small addition of paint, and that's it. That's all he's done. So it'll start to just look too flat if I'm not careful. Um, yeah, I mean it might take me a few paintings to get to grips with this. I'm planning to do a, uh, an early self-portrait of his with him sort of draped over um, a column or something looking like a dandy. Um, and again I just I chose that one uh, because it's just got some wonderful modelling and you can see the, you literally see the flow of the brush marks, the strokes as they go around the, or follow the form around. It's really bulging out there. It's just something you sort of realise <coughs> how he worked, how he has created certain effects, because that just seems to help it. Just you know, it's like a high, it's a highlight at the edge of the cheek. Possibly, I don't know. Um, but just like painting from life, this is just something, you know, just keep working and things come into view slowly. You've got to hand it to him, the modelling is just so wonderful. I've just got to have a very nice scumble over this. I really, really, really want to do some dark places. I'm sure there must have been, we must have had that.
I should get halfway through and realise I'm wearing the wrong glasses when my head starts to ache. Just pure vermilion, or oh, quite close anyway. I've just got a dry hog's hair, we'll just see if that helps. Part of me just doesn't like dry brushes, just there's something weird about it. Looks sickly somehow. It's quite good actually because it's sort of picking off a little bit of, of the paint at the same time, so therefore allowing the underpainting just to show through so slightly, so adding to the slightly more translucent quality that I'm trying to get. Hopefully my nose isn't showing again. I just have to accept that my nose is just going to be there. mixture here, very light around here. I'm not sure if the drawing's right actually. I've noticed I mean, I've done that sort of four or five times now, just gone over this area, just trying to get this highlight right, and then it gets a little bit darker as everything gets blended together. And all of the colours adjust. Right, we've got every brush out now. Just so subtle.
So it's just repetition. I've gone over it, I initially tested and uh, just tentatively working around trying to find the right values, the right um, chroma for these, for the highlights, for the cheeks, things like that. And then, you know, then I'm going to blend into it again and I start to make new discoveries. And as that progresses, I sort of work back into the areas that I've already painted. Looking at his other self-portrait and looking, I can't see this very, very closely. I just get the feeling that it's just wet paint. And it's just being moved around in this way. Just can't watch the guy working. That's a tragedy. Just got to try and work it out. A little, see, there's a little highlight here that just um, shows just the difference between her temple and her eyebrow. And it's not, it doesn't continue, it's not, it's just ever so slight, there's just a tiny bit of shadow in there. just modeling and yeah the hook's hair is sort of coming into its own a bit just, just pulling off as much as it puts on not really happy with that area it's very crude around the nose I feel that you know if I was to sort of put a glaze on there of say alizarin crimson burnt umber, maybe it's not the end of the world. Um, that might be something to do when this glaze has dried, and it would just soften some of these past some of these areas where it just looks a bit scratchy. Take off some of this, just deepen the shadow, but leave a little bit. Looking at the original, you can see that around here it's, it's quite cool. And it's a small brush that he's used to get in here. Doesn't necessarily show though, there are no real, it's just so beautifully done, there's no trace of a brush mark.
it's quite just her lower lid is quite light. And I just want to make that, yeah, I mean, a dark glaze could soften that transition. Oh, it's just hard not to wobble. This is a bit gross actually up here. So I've got my dry ox hair now. You just get the sense in the original is just well, I don't know how <coughs> how that's happened. I mean really he's using a brush. And he's just adding this high line going round and round. But it's impossible to see, it's so well done. And there's a temple there. So he suggested that. That's so, I've gone over that too much now. So it's just pure ochre. I don't know, now it looks funny in mine. I mean, possibly the um, this the glowing cheek is uh, that's going to be Naples yellow, possibly. But Naples yellow is I hmm. have to go and get some. I have some somewhere. Use a thin sable brush for that. Uh, but that's something I wanted to show actually, just using another hog's hair. Got some of my ochre and I'm just going to put some medium with it, just that. I'm just going to scumble that. Trying to use the brush, just following the line of the hair. Actually, I am scratching around a bit, but just 
Use it to emphasise so the line, the, the fibres of the hog's hair actually work to sort of create the illusion of hair as well. So that's a little discovery there, you know, I mean I'm just using this exactly the same for this cheek. And her temple is also like that, that's just a little bit lighter. I'll have to blend that in in a minute, but let's just finish this off. There are areas where there's a bit of red. So once I've done that, really, I could probably work into a little bit when it's uh, wet, but I'll wait for it to dry and then I'll just touch that up. I'll just um, do all of those very, very fine hairs there. You can see where you know, there's just certain where he's created. Oh, that's lovely. So it folds just here and it's just grey and then it just folds out. And it's styled. To be honest, I should have probably done this in the beginning and then people, you just get a sense of it because it does improve it. It's very golden but it's literally just, look at that, it's so simple. really more of the same. It's very warm. Does need a bit of red actually. And I would also need um, just some raw umber or something, or burnt umber and illusor and crimson to just um, put some sort of shadow, you know, just shadow accents in there and around her eyes. But yeah, wait until it's dry.
where the edges of the shadows are very warm. Just this is just dry. <coughs> you can see her eyelashes here, that's something I'll do later as well.
Well, I suppose uh, we're nearing the end of what I'm going to film. And, I, yeah, I mean, I did it, you know, this is my own version. And, uh, you know, I've done it to sort of prove a point that, uh, And so I've surprised myself that, you know, it really is possible to, to do something like this. Just with those, it's just ochre and vermilion and white. And you can get to this... I mean, yeah, you can approach it this far and probably, you know, who knows, but yeah, there would have been like additions of um, of shadows and things like that. And so maybe I will work into it because one of the problems as I've alluded to is that, you know, because I'm trying to sort of create a film uh, that's watchable, I, you know, it's a, I'm sort of sacrificing quality a little bit. So I will, I'll continue. But the point I want to emphasize more than any other is that it's just, this process continues and we continue until we're happy with it, until we've got it to a degree of finish that we feel, um, you know, we want to reach. So, you know, it's not finished, but yeah, hopefully I've just shown, you know, what, what is achievable with, you know, the, it's the raw umber underpainting, you know, there was black as well. Rubens absolutely used black when he did it. And uh, then he's just used vermilion and ochre with a little bit of white. And it probably it's just in the last 10 minutes, I think, for me, it started to work properly. And I got close to what I want. Um, you know, there's things like, yeah, I mean, I could just put a little dash of the hi of highlight in the eyes and things like that. Which I might just do, just for kicks. And I'm just using some of this. It's not pure white, because that can sometimes be overpowering. Um, but it can just give a little bit of life to the painting, to the eyes. I still have to um, work into the irises. I got fairly close to it in the underpainting, and probably that's enough because she's got sort of her eyes are quite cool and dark. I'm just taking a bit of the paint off my brush. Uh, yeah, so actually I would probably use raw rumber again for that, just to create the iris and a bit more of a sense of the pupil using some black. That's something else I'll do later, just off camera. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that's sort of, um, you know, just been at all helpful in any way. Uh, if, if anyone is watching this, if there's something specific that you'd like me to... Um, film then uh, let me know and I will okay so well this is how it ended up um, after the first glaze and I suppose all in all I was pretty happy with it I was a little disappointed I just thought it looks a little bit pasty compared to the original but that's just a lesson learned I think there's just a bit more it's a higher chroma you know, when you're mixing up those half pace and the scumbling, it's just um, something to be aware of. And that's definitely something that I'd be able to sort of fix with a second glaze. But I was just uh, hoping to try and get as far as I could with uh, just the one glaze. Because I've just got a feeling that's probably what Rubens would have done. So it's trying to just get as close as I can to his process. But uh, yeah, all in all, I think I was pretty happy with it. I was amazed that you could just use vermilion and yellow ochre and a bit of white to achieve that and that's all he used uh, there might be just a couple of uh, little um, shadow accents or something like that he would have used um, and maybe some black uh, burnt umber or alizarin crimson you know who knows but uh, just in a way just to prove it to myself uh, it was really worthwhile uh, doing that so i hope you enjoyed it and as i said please if there's anything that you'd like me to focus on, um, just uh, drop me a line and um, let me know and I'll do it.